main first. But yes, you are way ahead of me. So what do I write for this to exist? Very good. What do I write for this to exist? Very good. This one says greater than negative 2, and this one says greater than 1. So here's greater than negative 2. From negative 2, greater than negative 2. Here is from 1, greater than 1. I need where both exist at the same time. Common domain. Very good. Good. So now I'm ready to condense. How do I condense log of A minus log of B? Base 4 of exactly awesome well done till we get used to these three properties everything else will be very smoothly will go smoothly okay I'm ready Yes? We're changing it into an exponential equation. How? How do I change this into an exponential equation? 4 to the first power. 4 to the first power equals... Okay, now I have to ask myself what type of equation I have to solve next. Yes, and, <coughs> and here's my hint for you. What am I getting at? What am I telling you here? I am exactly, I'm telling you to cross multiply. Awesome. So let's cross multiply. What do we get when we cross multiply? Four x minus four, very good. Equals x plus two, very good. What type of equation is this now? It is linear, correct. Very good. So I subtract x and I get 3x. I add 4, I get 6. x equals 2. Yes, indeed. Can I choose another? We want to see another. Okay, very good. So let's look at um, 89. Natural log of x minus 4 plus natural log of x plus 1 equals natural log of x minus 8. How many functions, how many log functions we see in this equation? So three conditions then. For the first one, for the second one, awesome, and for the last one, very good. This one says greater than 4, this one says greater than negative 1, and this one says greater than 8. So, greater than negative 1, greater than 4, greater than 8. Common domain, please. Very good, indeed, A to infinity. Do you all agree? Is that, do I have to show that? Let me, okay, let me show, yes. So the first one is greater than 4, which is this. The next one is greater than negative 1, which is this. And the last one is greater than 8, 
which is this. Right? Greater than negative 1, greater than 4, greater than 8. So and, and if I have a solution here, it will make or keep all three tr c existing. If I choose this, if I have a solution here, one will not be one will not exist. Two will. If I have a solution here, only one and the other two will not exist. And if I have here, obviously nothing exists. Better? Very good. Okay. So now please condense the left hand side and keep the right hand side as is. Do you all agree with natural log? If you want to put it in bracket to see it better, do we all agree with natural log of the product as being the sum of these two logs? Agreed? Okay. Before we continue, let me refresh our memory on this. We had this equation, and we talked about it several times already. How did we think here? We didn't simplify, we didn't cancel, we didn't touch anything, right? We said this. If two numbers are equal and they have the same base, the exponents must be the same. There is no other way. Okay, same idea. Please pay attention. Two expressions are equal, and they have log in the same base. What has to happen to these? Can this side be 15 and this 25? No. Can the, exactly. So in this case, I don't have to change it into an exponential equation because I have also a log on the other side with the same base. So here I only think two expressions are equal. They have the same log, same base. You will not see different bases in this class on, in the same equation. Same base. Then these two expressions must be the same. The function is one to one. I can't find two x values that give me the same y value because it's one to one. Right? So these two must be equal to each other. So then x minus 4 times x plus 1 must equal x minus 8. Only because we did not need to change it into an exponential equation because the, both sides had the same base, if you want, like here. Good. Now what, equation, what type of equation is it? Yes, it's quadratic because I have to square. Here. I mean, I have to distribute. x squared plus x minus 4x minus 4 minus x plus 8 equals 0. Because I know that when I solve quadratic equations, like this one, for example, I have to have 0 on one side. Any questions so far? OK. So x squared, OK, these two happen to go away. Minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Quadratic equation. Very good. We discussed this on the very first day of classes. So then x equals 2. Two solutions, but basically, OK. Yeah. Is 2 a number greater than 8? No. The equation has no solutions. The left-hand side will never equal the right-hand side. Do we need more log equations? Do we need more log equations? 4.5 then, applications. We have three types of applications here. We already looked at few before with compound interest continuously and, and n times per year. But here we have in this section, we have three to look at. Number one is exponential growth. What grows exponentially? People, fish, population, mice, rat, rabbits, birds, bacteria. They all grow 
like this so fast, the fastest possible growth. One, this is one type. Exponential decay. This is for radioactive substances. They decrease their mass in time. And the last one is logistic growth model or function. You are not required to memorize any of these. They will be given to you in the problem. Okay, let's start with a logistic growth model. Okay, 37. So logistic is the first one. 37 on page 530. I'm going to copy a function. We're going to look at it and explain and answer the questions. What do I see here? Without even reading the information yet. This is T. So I see a function. The independent variable is T. Probably time. We'll see in a minute. And it's a ratio, but it's not a pure exponent a pure rational function. It has an exponential function in it. So it's a combination of rational function with exponential function, right? This piece is exponential, this is rational. Okay, perfect. Let's read and see what f of t represents, what t represents, and then answer the questions. It describes the number of people, so this is number of people, fine, um, f of t, who have become ill with influenza t weeks, with the flu, t weeks, t is in weeks, after its initial outbreak in a particular community. So they modeled the number of people based on number of weeks. Okay, perfect. First question. How many people became ill with the flu when the epidemic began? What does that mean? Say it again. No? Thank you. We're going to determine this in a minute. Question part B. How many people were ill by the end of the fourth week? Awesome. Here's what we do. Let's go to our calculators. And in y equals in y equals clear everything you have. And let's put in the following function, 100,000. The top does not need parentheses right now, only because it's just one number. Divided by, in parentheses for the denominator, 1 plus 5,000. Multiplied by, careful how we put in the e, second and natural log. Please put parentheses for the power which is negative, this negative symbol, x, close the parenthesis for the power, bring down the cursor and put the parenthesis to close the denominator. So one more time, 100,000, it's one number, we don't need to put parentheses around it. But the denominator is 1 plus 5,000e to negative x, I don't have negative t or t in the calculator. Uh, so uh, close the parenthesis for the power and close the parenthesis for the denominator. Next, let's go to second and table. If you fall behind, if you need help, please let me know. I'll come over in a minute, in a second. So I plug in 0, enter, and I plug in 4, enter. So initially, how many people got ill? Very good. At the end of the fourth week, because bacteria and flu grow exponentially, at the end of the fourth week, 
Only 20 people were initially ill. At the end of fourth week, how many people are ill? 1,080 people. Here's the part, part C question. What is the limiting size of the population that became ill? Yes. How do I see that, however? Because we're not going to graph this function. We didn't study this function when it comes to its graph. And we don't know about asymptotes for such a function. And there is no need. So I'm going to increase the number of weeks, let's say, to 10, 81,500. I'm going to increase it to 50 weeks, 100,000. I'm going to increase it to 80 weeks, 100,000. I'm going to increase it to 900 weeks, 100,000. So it cannot exceed more. So this is the, the size of the community. Assuming that nobody comes in to visit and nobody come, you know, gets ill, right? So the limiting size is indeed, I'm going to write this down, so part C, max 100,000 people, according to the model, can get ill. And this is how the logistic growth model works. Indeed, it happens to be the numerator for this function, yes, yes. But as I said, we have not discussed this um, function in terms of uh, graphs and so on and so forth. So we don't really need to name it as a horizontal asymptote, but, but that's exactly what it is. Very good. OK, do we think, do we, think we need another um, logistic growth model, or we can look at the exponential growth model? Exponential? OK, very good. Uh, are we interested in, um, there are two problems here on page 529. One deals with the population of Israel, and the other one with the population of the Palestinians in the same region. People, in other words. So exponential growth. Which one would you like to look at? Let's look at um, uh, the Palestinians in the West Bank, Gaza Strip, and East Jerusalem. This is one of the most populated, my, most, uh, other than China and India, is one of the um, most dense populations. Uh, there's, they have so many kids in the, those areas that um, there are two shifts. A shift from 8 o'clock in the morning till noon or 7 till noon, and another shift from 1 to 5 in the afternoon because they can't accommodate everyone. It's a very dense population. Okay, so this is problem 8 on page 529. In 2000, the population of the Palestinians in the three er areas, West Bank, Gaza Strip, and East Jerusalem, was approximately 3.2 million. And by 2050, it is projected to grow to 12 million. Use the exponential growth model. A function of t equals a0 e to kt. I'll explain what each piece represents. But have we seen this before? Have we seen this before? As I said, the model will be given to you. But I just, have we seen this before? A equals A0, E to KT. Same function with continuously compound interest. Just different notation. OK, so let's see what this means. This is the number of people at any point in time. This, or the accumulated, if you want. This, in our previous model, it was the principal, or the initial value. So this is the initial 
number of people. What do you think T is? Time in years. What do you think K represents? In the previous model, it was the interest rate, the annual interest rate. What will this be? Growth rate, indeed. Identical model with accumulated value equals the principal times E to the interest rate times time. Same thing. What do you think the third one will be? Absolutely identical, but it will have a minus in front of K. All three models are the same. Just the exponential decay will have minus in front of K. That's it. That's the only difference. And it will represent something else. The letters will be different. I mean, not different in how they look, but they will have different meaning. OK. So this is the exponential growth model. And now I have to look at what I'm given. Before we, uh, OK, in which t is the number of years after 2000. T, number of years after 2000. What does that mean? T equals what for 2000? So T is the number of years after 2000. So for the year 2000, T, exactly. Perfect. OK. So one more time, use the exponential growth model in which T is the number of years after 2000 to find the exponential growth function that models the data. So this is the function. This is the independent variable. I don't have a problem with this. I don't have a problem with this. But I'm, I am miss, missing two pieces. This is very clear. This is the base, E. This is time, which is the independent variable. But I'm missing two pieces of the puzzle. What am I missing? <coughs> the initial population, N, and the growth rate. If I determine this and this, I have a complete model. I know the function. Okay. So I have to come back now to what I'm told and what I'm given. OK. So in the year 2000, 3.2 million. In the year 2050, 12 million. What is given to us? Very good. I know that. But what is given when I'm told in the year 2000, 3.2 million? What is this? And also, say it again. True. But if I'm told, OK, if I say this, um, when x is 5, y is 10, I am given you what? An ordered pair. So what ordered pair is this? Three point two is the y coordinate. Time is always the independent. So time has always to have to be first. Zero comma. Awesome. What is the second ordered pair given to us? Very good. Awesome. So remember what these ordered pairs mean. It means that A of 0 is very good. When time is 0, the value of the function is 3.2. That's what the point is telling us. And now what is this? When a when t is 50, the number of people, the y coordinate is, that's it. These are the two points 
that will enable us to determine these two values once we plug them in sequentially, not at the same time, of course. Okay, so let's plug in this or this for the first, uh, as the first point. When the left hand side is 3.2, the right-hand side is A0, E to K multiplied by T. How much is T? That's it. So, how much is K times 0? How much is E to 0? Awesome. So then I found already that the initial population is 3.2. I'm not saying that they started with 3.2. I'm saying that from the moment we started counting, it was 3.2. That's all I'm saying. Good. So for now, I have this piece. I have it as 3.2. Okay. So for now, the model looks like A of T equals 3.2 E to K T. I'm one step closer to finding or getting the entire model. Now, I have to put in this expression or this piece of information. How will I write it? The left hand side is? Perfect. We are looking at this point now. Very good. Equals 3.2e to which power? When I plug in 12, I must put 50 in t. There is no other way. Because I am told when t is 50, then a is 12. So this must be 50K. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I know what this is an exponential equation, but it's not cleaned up yet. I must get rid of this number before I do what? Before I apply natural log to both sides. So first I have to get rid of this. So I will divide both sides by 3.2. 12 over 3.2 equals e to 50k. Now I'm ready. Don't bother with this number. Don't divide. Don't simplify anything. There is no need. So now I'm ready to do what to both sides? So natural log of 12 over 3.2 equals. Now it's important what to right next. 50k times natural log e, but natural log e is 1. Right? So then k equals, what do I do to both sides to find k? Very good. Be very careful, this is not natural log of 12 over natural log of 3.2 or anything like that. Careful with that. So let's um, plug it in. So at the top, natural log is one term. You don't have to put parentheses around natural log. But I have to write 12 divided by 3.2. And I have to close the parentheses. And I have to divide by 50. No need of parentheses around 50. And press enter. For um, such uh, growth rate or any rate of this kind, we have to use four digits for decimals. So k equals 0 0.0264. Finally, I have the entire model now. No more secrets. 3.2 e raised to 0 0.0264 t. Final question. In which year will the Palestinian population be 9 million? That's part A, and this is part B. In which year, when, will the population be 9 million, assuming the model is still correct. What do I have to do? Say it again. In? In what? I have to think. 
I have two variables. I have time and amount. Which one am I given? Oh, I'm given the amount, so I cannot plug it in as see if it's t. I'm not saying you said that, I'm just clarifying. So, which one is 9? Yes, this piece is 9. Is that clear with it for everyone? Yes? The amount, we want to know when. We want to find t when the amount of people, number of people, is 9. Good, so now we want to solve this equation. What do I need to do? I have to clean it up first. Not yet, not ready yet. Yes, I will divide by 3.2. 9 divided by 3.2 equals e to 0 0.0264t. Awesome. Now what? Yes, now I apply natural log. And what will I write? Yes. Awesome. Excellent. So then T equals? Perfect. And let's approximate. In the graphing calculator, Top and bottom, we don't need parentheses, but we need parentheses to divide the log, inside the log. So natural log, left parentheses already popping up, 9 divided by 3.2. Close the parentheses and divide by uh, 0 0.0264. So this means 39 years. And this is since 2000. Yes, please. Okay, go ahead. Yes, please. So the y variable, a of t, is in millions. Yeah, so in 2000, 3.2 million. In 2050, 12 million. So we are asked to find here somewhere in the middle. Um, when, when the population would be 9 million. So we replaced A of T by 9 million. We divided both sides by 3.2 and we apply natural log and we got 39 years, which means 2039. Which makes sense, right? If there are 3 million in 2000 and, and predicted 12 million in 2050, somewhere in between, closer to 2050, uh, the population should be 9 million. Is that okay?